We all know Sarah Silverman as the funny and provocative Emmy-winning actress and comedian. Now she is also an author, having written her memoir called The Bedwetter, Stories of Courage, Redemption, and Pee. And Sarah Silverman is with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Harry. How you doing, bub? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. I've seen you on television so much, I'm not sh so sure our paths have ever crossed. And one of the things that occurs to me Im immediately is how pretty you are. You're just, you're really pretty. I'm very, very pretty. Yeah. 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 I didn't know that I could make that into a laugh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. Thank um, you. I'm picking up this book, I'm reading this book, and it reminded me some of reading Lenny Bruce how to Talk Dirty and Influence People. Did you, did, have you ever come across that, his, his autobiography? No, I did not. I've never read his autobiography. Yeah. But, it, uh, but thank you okay. for the comparison. <laughs> because there are, some people have said you are that person in a female body in a different sort of generation, a person who's kind of knocking down doors and saying, we're going to take comedy in some places it's never been before. Yeah. Um, is that a question? Do I start talking now? Yeah, sure. If you want to, I can shut up. Um, no, 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 no. I didn't mean that. I just didn't know if that was, if you were, oh my God, this is going terribly. No, it's going really well. I think um, it's flattering to have that kind of uh, comparison or whatnot, but I, I don't really write or do comedy with any intentions of okay. like what, how I want it to right. affect or anything. I think that comedy kind of dies in the second guessing of it, you know, so I, gotcha. I just try to be silly and if people infer anything with meaning, that's just uh, lucky for me. Lucky for you. <laughs> You're such an interesting upbringing in New Hampshire with a father who was a bit of a character to say the least, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he, you would say these outrageous, unrepeatable things that we could never say on television, and he found it all completely amusing. Well, he taught it to me. You know, he's like one of those dads who taught his three-year-old swears, oh, there he is in his uh, Fourth of July outfit. Yeah. You can't see his red, white, and blue socks. But, so he um, taught you how to swear? Yeah, he thought it was funny, you know, like a three-year-old swearing. And it's funny because I don't think it was until I started doing interviews and stuff that I, you know, you're kind of forced to deconstruct your life a little bit. And you know how like the biggest realizations are so simple, mm -hmm. but it makes sense. Like he taught me swears when I was three. I mm -hmm. said swears, you know, in the middle of the supermarket when I was three. And I got this reaction that was kind of like shock and yet, but approval from right. the grownups. And sure. it was addicting. I think that I looked for that kind of approval and aha, over and over again. And, and it, aha, here you are in, as an adult. It may have in, informed some may of have my in, informed. adult life. I would think so. The other thing that I think that informs a, a, a good portion of your life, because we're you know laughing along reading this book, and it gets to the point where you really get serious to talk about going to a girlfriend's house when you were, what, six years old? And there's a sleepover, and you're not sure, and you're a bedwetter, and you try to communicate to your mom. I don't really want to stay here tonight. And she says, go ahead, honey. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, I think there are tender moments, but I mean, it's with levity, but it's, it was a bummer. I mean, you know, I'm six years old and I was at a birthday party, so excited, cake, jungle gym. And then I find out it's a sleepover. And then the birthday girl is standing right there while I call my mom and see if I can sleep over. And I'm just wishing there was some sort of code word to, so that my mom knows to say I can't sleep over. But of course my mom's gonna be like, of course you can sleep over, sweetie. And yeah. I'm like, yay. Wow. You know, and then borrowing pajamas and <laughs> borrowing a sleeping bag in the, the panic, you right. know. But it doesn't go away when you're eight or when you're 10 or when you're 12 or when you're even in high school. Yeah. <sighs> that is a like a horrendous burden, I would think, to have to sort of figure out how to cope with life with at that age. It was for me. I mean, it's just to be like 14 and still be wetting the bed and just the humiliation and like the uh, going to sleepaway camp, you know, your whole life and knowing that every night is going to be kind of a disaster, but m even worse, the mornings, you know. Yeah, yeah. People know you as so funny and so sort of groundbreaking and everything else in this book helps tell that story, but this is, this is pretty serious, right? 
Do you know why you wrote this book? You know, Harry, <laughs> I wanted to tell my story <laughs> and help little girls. Um, <laughs> I guess that's kind of true. I mean, it's 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 funny. It's it's just personal essays. It, they're stories that I felt like I would probably be interested in reading yeah. should I know how to read and um, <laughs> you know sometimes it gets a little tender yeah you know it's kind of like uh, when Fonzie first cried I guess it's so similar I was the exact <laughs> image I had in mind when I had a little tear in the corner of my eye thank you for being with us this morning oh my pleasure really appreciate it a lot happens early on the early show weekday mornings on CBS